So in my last video, uh, I talked about getting ready to start an asset management program and how to go about that, collecting the information, grabbing the manuals, grabbing the, the PNIDs and things like that. Well, at this stage of the game, we have our information that we gathered. We got all that documentation taken care of, but this is the next phase in that. And that is taking the information from those PNIDs and actually going out and, and doing a walkthrough of the flow process to see all of the, the assets that may be there. Because honestly, you don't pick everything up from that. And what we will do now is in this, in this short video uh, is to start that process. Now, like I said, this is a wastewater treatment plant that has been abandoned, all right? Uh, it was abandoned due to cause. Uh, the growth just didn't happen many years ago. Um, however, uh, growth is happening now. It is what it is after the COVID. Things are moving again. Life is good, but this is a, this is a wastewater treatment plant that needs to be put back in service. So uh, because of that, they have said, let's create an asset management program for this plant. And that's what I explained to you in an earlier, and, and I will be doing that inside of the Pure IO asset management program. But this is, this is what we're going to do. So we see that there's, this is an SBR type of wastewater treatment plant and you can see things like that. But what we would do is start down here at the entrance of the plant, okay? And then go from there to one step of another. What I will be doing though, is just show you the start of the process. Now, it's bear with me because I've got a I've got to walk from one asset to the other. Uh, we'll, it'll the video won't be that long. We'll just start the process. Now, if you can see right here, located in the distance, this is what's called the uh, the, the 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 headworks of the of the the plant or uh, the the influent part of that plant. So, of this plant, and we will go to it and just see what we what we have here. Now again, being wastewater, you're never sure what you're gonna get in, all right? Uh, you're there to clean clean up waste of, of humans, all right? Uh, but you also get many other things besides just humans' uh, body function waste. So again, I told you, it's a uh, it's an older plant that kind of got scavenged a little bit when they when they did the um, when they did the process. I had to swap arms here when they did the process of shutting it down, not knowing when they'd ever come back to it. And uh, workers need parts, and they go, "Hey, to another plant that's located on the other side of town." Workers say, "I know where there's one of these parts, and we need it bad. Let's go get it." And you know, with a plant that shut down, you just don't don't put that put that asset back in. And when assets don't run, you know what happens to them? They deteriorate rapidly. So uh, that's kind of sort of what has happened here. However, the good the good knowledge of the uh, the folks that that run run the uh, the work city works public works program for this particular city. Uh, they, they see that, they understand that, they're, they're going to invest funds to put it back in service because they've got growth coming and they know it this time. Uh, they, they know that they've got a lot of growth. Uh, being in the South, <laughs> we seem to be attracting a lot of folks anyway. So uh, that's a different ball game. So here we are at what's called the, the inlet or, or the, uh, the influence of, of this waste plant. And the very first thing that happens is as the flow comes in, and it's all underground, uh, but as the flow comes in, the first thing you have to start doing is to manage uh, the, 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 the crud and the flow that gets in there. And this particular thing is called a bar screen, all right? It's gonna trap all of the flow that comes through here and this over here 
is a bar screen stepper, meaning this bar screen here, uh, you'd have to come rake it at times. Rake it out, clean it out to let the flow go. Otherwise, it's just going to bypass and flow over it. And all that crud and grit and all is going to wind up in some pumps, and we don't want that. So this is where we filter out the first part of whatever inflow uh, from the sewage lift stations uh, that, that may may push water this way or stuff this way. Um, now this over here is a bar screen uh, stepper. In other words, it's an automated. You don't have to rake it, it rakes itself. Uh, it, it does that uh, with, let's see if I can open this up. Uh, well, yes, why well, yes I can, excuse the noise. But if you can see, there's a bar screen stepper here. And this is just like steps. And what it does is it constantly comes this way and it's raking itself uh, in an automated function, all right? And then that rake goes into uh, an automated auger. All right, excuse the, excuse the, the flipping of the pumps now. So the, the large debris, we don't want to go into our process. And again, you're going to see it, but here's an auger. Now again, I told you, everything's a bit dilapidated at the moment, but trust me, uh, when they get it all back in service, everything will be good to go. Uh, some of these things actually do work, uh, even though they look like they might not, but they do. And those things that are working, uh, they re-lubricate them, re the, uh, basically do the commissioning steps on them all over again. And that's what's about to take place. So I took pictures of, of this influent, all right? I took pictures of of the bar screens. I took pictures of the, the bar screen stepper uh, and, and grit stepper, whatever you'll call it. And then the auger, I take all these pictures so that I know, and that auger, by the way, there would be a dumpster over there and an automated process would be, I'm cleaning my own screen. And then from there, the water goes into a catch basin box, uh, call it a pit call it a vessel, call it whatever you want to, but it's it's where it all comes back together. This would be more of the bypass side. That would be more of the automated side. The flow would come in there and you can see that it would go right through another tunnel. All right, down through the the manhole. Uh, now this, this manhole, by the way, uh, actually allows some residue from the plant to be mixed back in with the influent because it just it, it needs to go to reactivation of the waste and all uh, so so that you wouldn't put it back on that side to come through you would put it back here and that's in the pnids i saw that in pnids now i'm not a wastewater expert don't get me wrong uh uh but i am <laughs> excuse my shirt awesome just like my daughter Okay, uh, she gave me this for Father's Day. Uh, but anyway, uh, so so you would recycle some process water back here, all right? And, and then what you would wind up doing inside here, and I won't uh, pull it up, but I did earlier. There are pumps down in this, so the flow comes from over here over into the pump section here and and so uh i captured those pumps uh in the video uh, or excuse me in pictures because it, it's not about me being in the picture uh, but i captured them in the pictures so that i can tag those pumps and some of this location and things into the asset management program that i'm building for them all right so we'll know where it is what it is what it looks like and for all those people who sit in the office and say, ooh, I'm building a program, and don't really get out, they'll get to see what this stuff looks like.
uh, actually in, in real time. Also around here, you see the electrical panels and stuff. It's all being refurbished. It's all being done. Uh, matter of fact, you can, you can see some old uh, uh, aerators that are floating aerators that, that mix up the, the water and give it air agitation and stuff. Uh, that they already have yanked out and you'll see some new ones up here so this is some of the this is some of the stuff that's being replaced and they're in that process now i will pull up a, we'll, we'll pull this up real quick if we can and if i get off of it can't do everything As you can see, right down in there, in the pit, uh, there are sunken pumps. Actually, in, due, in respect, there are three of them, and they go down on these slide bars, and they're down in there. That's the influence of the plant right there. It's going to pump it up to the SBRs that are over here. Let me close this. Never good leave something open if you can avoid it there you go now I will tell you because those three pumps are there inside here are three more valves I took pictures of those also so just so you know that uh that's that's the continuation of the process so we know that we have assets uh, in, in, in the uh, Influent bar screens, uh, the Influent bar stepper screens, and then we have vessels here, and they also have to check this. Every 20, 30 years, it might need to be refurbished. Uh, even though it doesn't seem like it has a lot of wear, it wears, all right? And here you have the pumps. Those pumps are captured in our, in our asset structure. And in here are the discharge check valves and, and manual valves for each one of the pumps that are here. I'm not going to open it up, so it just saves me a little bit of breath, too. But anyway, I capture those, all right? Now, what's important with the manuals and all that I, that I collected earlier, and I'm pointing up here because it's where the office is, what's important about the manuals is I try to tag the manuals with each asset that we have. So I know what kind of pumps are in this in the hole down here all right and they're submersible pumps but those manuals are tagged to the assets themselves so you don't have to go say well who put the book where we, we're going to have the information necessary to maintain these pumps to the fullest degree uh, with with uh, with those assets uh, tagged to the assets themselves all right now while I'm down here and it's not always in the flow but uh, but if you can see up here, you can see it, see a kind of like a cyclone separator, but it's a grit grit separator. All right, and some of the some of the uh, stuff that comes out of the bottom of the sludge is now it's fed back up in here to get recycled. But you don't want to recycle the grit that goes with it, and and so that grit will get separated out. The the, the excess water and stuff will go this way, and then what you can see is the bottom. So while I'm here, I go ahead and take pictures of that too. I find out what kind of what kind of separator it is, uh, and I collect that. Now I look at the components associated with it. It's got valves and stuff under. The question becomes: All right, I have an asset. I'm going to protect that asset. How might that asset fail? And that's in that FMEA analysis that we will do, and we will do it on that 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 also. Okay. Now. I'm not going to, but very briefly, we'll walk up there. But way down this road here, all right, is where after the, everything, the water and all gets filtered, the, the sewage gets filtered out and everything, it's discharged. And we actually have a series of effluent pumps. We have influent here. Okay, let me get it right. Influent here, and then we have the effluent pumps from this location 
down that way and it actually discharges back into a physical body of water now it's uh it's checked for compliance because there's there's uh a certain compliance that must be associated with any water discharged back into a public water system or or, or a natural water system and that is exactly where this goes all right and we won't go in here either but the sludge that comes out of the bottom of these SBRs, um, the waste that comes out of here that doesn't get processed, goes over here. And then when I say processed, I'm talking about eaten up by little bugs, but goes over here to be pressed the water out of it and then, and then either hauled to a landfill or it's put here to drain the water out and then hauled to a landfill. It's best to press the water out if we possibly can. We can remove it a lot quicker. Over here are sand beds and stuff that lets the water seep back out of it. Uh, and then you shovel it up and haul it off. That's kind of what you do. You can see in, in this, they're refurbishing, getting rid of some valves and stuff like that. Now, I'll try to move as quick as I possibly can. It can get a little tiring but I'm back to my process. So my influent pumps wind up pumping it into what's called an SBR, all right? Uh, and in those multiple SBRs, and that's the type of wastewater treatment plant this is, you can see they it's just basically an open vat. Now this vat has air agitation and things like that that take place. There's some air compressors downstairs, all right? But you can also see the refurbishment here and the investment that they're doing. Here are some brand new AWA valves, all right? And it lets air get injected into it uh, you have more valves here and notice they're brand new because the other one when a plant's been sitting here for 15 years plus probably then you know things aren't going to work and things are going to have to be replaced and that's exactly what what's taking place all of the motor operated valves uh, they are replacing all of them the good news is they're they're replacing them with very reliable, very good, easy to tune, and don't fail very often valves, uh, motor operated valves, and that's a good thing. The aerator down there, I told you, the ones that are way down here, notice they're being replaced with brand new ones. Okay, the things have worn out, they just, there, there wasn't a need to put them back in. We're gonna build a reliability strategy for these. We're even going to build a reliability strategy for this pit itself because concrete does deteriorate. It needs to be inspected every so often. Notice, and there's a little bit of flaking on it, there's a coating inside here. Every so often the coating needs to be inspected because you don't need to be eating away at the concrete with, with a lot of these reactions and chemical reactions in some degrees. You don't need to be eating away from that. So, so, uh, a lot of that takes place um, and, and is uh, necessary to, to do the inspections, do the PM pro. Now, the vessel itself here, this concrete vessel, PMs, people say, oh, you're going to create me a PM on that? That PM might not roll around, but every 10 years. But you can't not do it because in 15, 20 years, you might be eating away at your concrete and it's gonna cost you a whole lot more. It doesn't cost that much to go in and inspect this, all right? And that's some more of what we capture. We capture the valve. We will give it a name. Uh, we will give each one of these valves a name. We know what they are from the flow patterns and the PNIDs that we have. We will name each one, put them in as individual assets inside of our program. We'll build the, uh, the failure modes and effects cause analysis for each, each, each one. And I'll say this much, FMEA and FMECAs, they don't necessarily need to be done on everything, but anything that uh, is, is costly, safety, 
uh, compliance, environmental compliance, or or uh, critical to the operation of the of the plant and the system, then it needs to be done, and that's exactly what we will be doing uh, in respect of those different valves. All right, more something as simple as this crane here. Uh, it's for pulling this this pump up. It's it, it'll have a, a, a reliability program built for you also. And again, the middle the middle vessel uh, where sedimentation and all takes place, and the other SBR. And again, you can see even the new stuff that's down in there. Okay. Now that process goes on and on uh, until we eventually, and being wastewater, you wind up before you send it out to the, you you chlorinate it somewhat. Whew, butterfly scared me. <laughs> Easily scared. Uh, but anyway, so you you put some, some some active chlorination in it to to kill any additional bacteria that may have been left. But then all the way down the way where the influence are effluents are, you're going to do some final cleanup uh chlorination or dechlorination actually um and then and then whatever additional uh bacteria that that may be there you're going to kill maybe with uv disinfection or something like that and you're going to sample it because it has to be sampled for compliance purposes now all that's a tricky process all that needs to take place and you can't not do it if you're going to number one protect the public number two protect the investors and number three have this plant and its assets available for the long-term future all right uh, and we want to create a a program that that helps us identify early failures it helps us uh, plan for the future in life cycle management uh, and we want to run this thing as efficient and cost least cost uh, available uh, to to the people who pay for it anyway uh, hope this helped you a little bit do that walk through uh, collect your information collect your documentation you have to get all of that stuff uh, all in one location and then build that asset management program uh, got a little sweat going on here but build that asset management program and then like i say this <laughs> number one folks don't have the time to do it themselves so they call folks like me and others there there are many others that will do this for you uh, and many other programs that will do it so but folks will call us and building the program, especially when you've done it for the number of years we've done it, uh, isn't that difficult and hard to do. However, uh, the hard part is following the program that you've actually bought and paid for. Uh, and if you follow the program, I will tell you that life will be good. Things will uh, take care of themselves. And with this particular plant, as all uh, water, wastewater, other, other power plants and things like that, uh, compliance is so necessary. And if you take care of the assets that handle and manage those compliance numbers, your compliance issues will go away. Uh, the plant will do what it's designed to do. And the only thing that will make this plant old is technology not, not uh, a worn out plant. A worn out plant just means it wasn't maintained very well. So only technology. Hope this helps. Uh, more to come and, and, and the finished product. Maybe you'll see that very soon too. Have a great day. Talk to you later.